Today, I would love to talk about the soul, the spirit and the human. I don't know exactly where we're going to go with this beautiful channel, but I'm going to ask the spirit beings of the highest realms of the true white light, the angels, the ancestors, the guides to come through and support us in the soul activation. I've been very curious about the oversoul, the soul, the spirit, the human, and how we come together. I've been very fascinated with the subconscious, unconscious beliefs, and also conscious awareness. Now, I do not class myself as an intellect. I do not, if I look at the 3D, um, I would say picking order of the education system. I certainly don't put myself right up the top there. I am dyslexic if I want to give it a label. Um, but I'm also the opposite of that, an extremely energetic being. I My language, my first language, my frequency is energy as it is for you as well. But for some reason, I wasn't able to drop that and focus on the intellect stuff. I, I could just simply get lost at school or in groups of people or with family members, get very, very lost in reading the energetics of what was happening, analyzing it, thinking it, feeling it, empathing it, sympathizing, whatever you, whatever you will. It, it doesn't matter how we explain these things the fact of the matter is school was not my jam writing and reading seems to be quite slow for me so maybe we could put me in the ADHD you know I don't even feel like I'm male or female I know I've got a female body but I've never really noticed the difference between religions or status or even like, you know, at school, I didn't really notice a difference between boys and girls. I did from what we were perceiving around us, like what I was meant to, what I was, the projections I was getting. But when it came down to it, when I was like 14, 15, my good friends were females and males. Race, I, I didn't even understand. I didn't even know there was a difference between races. I didn't know that the color of your skin was an issue or a thing. I didn't know that literally being attracted to the same sex was like bad or getting divorced and not being with your partners. All of these concepts were shown to me as I grew up. And every single time I heard another rule, I would just get a little bit heavier. And every single time I got a no, you're doing it wrong, or you have to do this or this or this. I, I just got heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier. And I became denser and denser and denser. And I nearly felt like I started just kind of disappearing I started becoming so solid and I started realizing well for me to survive I can't be light I can't be carefree you can't live off air money doesn't grow on tree I better sort my shit out and work really really hard to get somewhere my soul was so lit as a child and so free and so light as was yours and every time I saw an energy that was not congruent with each other, where there was an ego attached, a fighting, where there was negativity, where there was separation, my heart would tear. And as I'm speaking this to you and trusting and hoping that you hear something in, in, this, in the codex that is coming through, I've got channels coming through me energetically here. I hope you can hear beyond my words and hear what my soul is trying to say. There is no hierarchy. There is no guide, spiritual teacher, <laughs> mother, uh, educational teacher, you know, um, spiritual leader as in like, you know, with popes and priests and deacons or cult leaders or modality guides and leaders that are better than anyone else but for some weird reason this is the thing that I never did get I never did entrain to the thought that other people were better than me or I was better than other people and those those 
kind of glimpses of the ego that comes in and say, well, she's better be doing better than you, or she's making more money than you, or he is holy. So he is better than you. And those glimpses, they felt so dark and so heavy. I felt like they were going to kill me. So I would just push them aside and go, okay, I can't even, I can't even, I'm not going to go there. When we are talking about the soul, we can be so linear as human beings okay so i'm gonna start with the human that's what i'm gonna start with the human being has got a mind that is brilliant that can be manipulated that can be tricked the mind is our most beautiful tool yet our most dangerous tool it is a weapon. It has been used, and if you have been in any type of trauma, abuse, or relationship where someone has tried to make you feel less than, and I'm getting that every single person, mostly, unless you're at the exception, has been through something like that. Even if it was unintentional, the system that we are in as 3D humans, dense, heavy, right? has been created by control systems. When we are simply entrained to this this density and we are just trying to be 3D and trying to survive, there is always a pull of need or want. There's always a pull of maybe or can't or should or could or whatever, there's all this, always a pull. And that pull is telling you that you've got to get more of something. You've got to fill it up because there's something missing. That missing thing is not the material. The material is extremely important. The material looks after your human, your humans. And all morning I've been sitting with this pull and pull from the 3d and the 5d my eyes have been watering up they i'm feeling a lot of emotion today a lot of emotion and for a non-energetic non-emotional being if we look at my human design chart as a very open projector it is not that normal for me to be feeling so so emotional but when I dive into the collective energy because I am a mirror for the world and I'm also a sponge and I receive just so much information my empath comes in, my, my spirit comes in. And my spirit just feels the deep, deep connection with every single other human, with the planet, with the galactics, right? With all of the collectives, the children collective and the mother collective and the father collective, the ocean collective. And what actually happens is I get pulled. What are the 3D things that I need to do today? What are the 5D things I need to do today? What is my soul calling me to do today? Which is another voice. It's another echo. When we are coming from soul, we don't have the need. We do not have the pull. We do not have the ego. We are purely coming from what we call with seeing with the heart. When we see with the heart, when we come from a soul, kind of like a soul overview of where we're at in our life, we know what to do. And I feel so much emotion saying this because we have somehow separated the human from the spirit from the soul, yet we are the three in one. Maybe the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Maybe it's meant to be the Father, the Mother, and the Holy Spirit. Maybe it's meant to be the human, the spirit, and the soul. One of the things that I noticed when I went to church with my 3D being, my human, I would sit and I would feel the soul of the church. And I always 
saw myself as pretty lucky being able to be a part of such a holy church. My soul would sing. I remember miracles happening. I remember sitting there one day about 15 years old and there's these boys in front of me and I was like, oh my God, we're going to have to shake hands soon. <gasps> oh my God. When the, when the basket comes around to put our change in, they're like, I'm going to have to look at them. Oh, I just wanted to die. I don't want to fucking be here. I fucking hate this. I remember just hating on church so, so deeply. And then I felt someone touch the top of my head. And I went through my body. That day, I believe that the Holy Spirit touched me. And then I sang and I smiled at my mom. And I was like, whoa, mom, you're not going to believe this. I didn't want to be there. And I was swearing and all these things. She's like looking at me like, oh God, what's going to come out of your mouth now, Victoria? She's always so scared of what I was going to say because I you don't really have much of a filter. I told her the Holy Spirit touched me and I was able to sing and shake hands and the put, you know, send the basket around and whatnot. As I went through my life and I started realizing that the heaviness of going to a church and the words that they were saying did not resonate with me. The words that they were saying seemed so wrong because I don't see myself as weaker than a male. I don't see myself needing to be looked after. I don't see why God is a man, like all these different things, right? And this is not to this is not to compare belief systems. I surely would never desire to do that. But for me, sitting there as a 3D human, growing up, feeling like I knew nothing. I was never, ever told that I was a soul all-knowing. I was never, ever told that I was worthy just as I was. I just presumed I was deemed to hell because as I grew up and I wanted to experience, I'm the three, five projector. I'm here to experience things and get my hands dirty. And here I was with my hands tied because if I dare do anything, surely it would be a sin. Surely I'd be deemed. What the fuck am I supposed to do? It's like I was in a prison. It felt so heavy. It felt so wrong. But therefore, I still felt the love. My soul was still opening up. I felt so good. When I was in prayer, I felt so good. And then other times I felt so shit. Such a bad person. No one will ever love me. I'm going to hell. You know, the other thing was, what if, what if I find someone who won't bring up my children religious? Will my kids go to hell, purgatory? All of these questions, but there was such a pull. Right, And this morning I felt that same pull. I felt the pull between the 3D human being, my spirit and my soul, which is more 5D. I'm getting this pull and I'm, I'm really reflecting back on my clients and how they come to me full of gratitude and love and expansion and they're doing the things and they're having the impact and they've come to their deepest why and they're like, yes, and we're celebrating and we're high-fiving. And then the times that they come to me where they are distraught, they're confused, they feel like they're not doing good enough, they are looping, looping in the 3D conditioning, the conditioning that was put onto us from the moment we were born. Recording in progress. And in those moments when my clients message me, I hold space and I remind them of who they are, who they are as a soul. So it's very fitting that today I desire to talk to you about the soul, to tap into a little bit about the oversoul, the spirit and the human, and how we can be all together 
as one, as an integrated, beautiful, divine being. A being of light and knowing that we are whole and that there is no such thing as a sinner. The only sin is, which I heard this from the beautiful book Mary Magdalene Revealed, the only sin is not to receive yourself, is to deny your soul, your human, your spirit from seeing yourself. That was not exactly in the book, but that's an energy I got from the book. So your human being requires to be looked after. And we see so many guru energies out there. We see so many spiritual leaders either saying, you don't need material things or you need material things. And I'm going to show you how I made this 100K a month. And, you know, if you're not doing this, then you're not in alignment because the money's not coming to you. You're not the frequency of that money. And I want to just call BS on all of it. Okay. Your 3D human will always get looked after. Okay. Like if you are focusing on looking after the 3D being. If you are setting the intention of, I desire to be healthy within this, this body. This is my body suit. This is my like vessel, right? I like the word vessel rather than body suit. I kind of feel like it's like, oh yeah, it's like, oh, it's just, it's just clothes, right? I mean, maybe we should just honor our clothes more. I don't know. But this vessel that we have is a very intricate system with that gives us <laughs> intricate guidance. The fact that I feel extremely emotional today, that my heart is wide open and I just want to uh, purge and cry is because I have found keys that my soul has been sewing and sharing with me all weekend. Little tiny keys that I've been finding in the presence of my 3D reality. To disappear from the 3D presence is to let go of really the soul's mission and what I mean by that is because there's a couple of different elements here is if we go out of presence and we go into the thinking mind and we, we start looping and getting lost and we're trying to grab and we should and we could and we you know want and maybe and all the different things we're trying to grab all of these these concepts thinking that that external from us and it's coming from like a need energy this is when we are lose this is that sin right this is where we are losing those parts of ourselves thinking that the answer is external from here the other part of it is if we go into a deep meditation and we go into a deep 5D space of ritual or ceremony or meditation, um, yoga, I do really enjoy yoga for this space, we come into a presence so, so deeply there we actually come into the spirit, the soul and the human as we become more embodied as a, an entire being, as a whole being, not just one, two, or three, right? To think that we must work separately on these things is creating separations, therefore ego. So I find it really, really fascinating that when we feel the push-pull, that it's not something to make wrong. So for instance, for me, I used to run so hard from the uncomfortableness, the anxiety, the depression, the wrongness. And this morning I was actually for the last few days, I've been wanting to run because I've been trying to be present in my 3D. I've had digital detox. I've been trying to be present with every single moment, yet half of me, my subconscious I'm believing, is really rejecting rejecting being present in the 3D because it's so much nicer to disappear and that is the illusion to disappear I disappear into the 5D by by cutting off my presence by cutting off my 3D reality that is not 5D integration or ascension if you will it's not ascension ascension is coming within deeper into the heart space 
to see with the heart, to lead with love, to lead with the heart space. So it's not surprising that I feel the human, my human, wanting to sh- to shed, wanting to like shred, wanting to baptize herself by diving into water to come back to self. And when I say baptize, I don't mean baptize myself up or give myself power away to anybody. I mean coming back to self again and again and again and again. So the feeling of push-pull is an indicator to come back to embodiment. This is a tool to come back to embodiment, to get those tools to be embodied as a soul and a spirit within a human and knowing that I'm much larger than a human. So to bypass the human, to just go simply to the soul work and the spirit work, this is where we come into real deep problems because we're by, this is what I suppose people talk about when they say spiritual bypassing. I feel like spiritual bypassing is the trend at the moment um, using those words. And maybe it's just so beautiful because then people actually get to understand what that is. But I also want to really reiterate that human words are so dense and 2D. I may be wrong. Maybe they're not 2D. Don't really care. But they are not 5D. (laughs) Words have got power to them. But how can we ever explain the soul? We can't really get soul's purpose from a sentence. People come to me, what's my soul's purpose? How can I, what is my genius? What is my superpowers? I'm like, I can tell you that, but I need to let you know that the words I speak to you are very, very, very limiting. I speak more in a code of like light language is more of a codex. It's a it's an energy language. I speak more in energy that you can hear behind the words that I speak to you today. And that is why sometimes we can get a bit, what the hell do you just say? (laughs) It's a codex. Today I'm asking you to bring your, your 3D into the forefront. Instead of sticking to the plan or the shoulda, coulda, woulda, can't, maybe. Actually taking some ownership of what your 3D requires. Our brain will tell us we have certain targets and goals and stuff. And any good leader, spiritual um, or, you know, coach or whatever will will let you know that it's great to have tolls, tolls, that's targets and goals <laughs> mixed together. It's great to have tolls. It's great to have targets and goals. But if we don't have the flexibility to work along with our soul and our spirit and really move with that, then we're making things too dense, but we're not actually dense. We are not dense at all. The 3D may be, but as a soul and a spirit, we are light. The light that we have comes within our heart and every single person is has a light and is good is good we also have bad within us ultimately we are good but we've got all sorts of stuff now let's just kind of like remove the energies of good and bad because again they, they've got these deep attachments to the word so does love so does god um so does soul and everybody seems to think they know what these things mean but no one no one is actually 100% energetically correct, or should I say 100% verbally correct, but they could be energetically correct. When we start thinking that we know better and more than other people, and and we are literally like, we found it, we've seen these collectives, or I spoke to Mother Mary, or Jesus talked to me, or I'm a Reiki master, or you know, I've done this and that modality. And da, 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 da. When we start thinking that there is a hierarchy in that, that's when we have completely lost our way. And we've actually gone on a bit of a tangent, <laughs> like I have right now, which is more like a channel. So 
to come back to heart, to come back to center, to come back to nothingness, to to become more conscious is to know less, is to know nothing. And this is why at the beginning I come in and I'm like, you know, I ain't no scholar on the pecking order of intellect. I'm not right up there because I could not grasp the concepts of punctuality or, you know, language or like writing. It, it's, I'm left-handed and right-handed. Like I was more this girl who just went, oh my gosh, I love my connection that I feel to the church through the soul energy. And then I got deeply disturbed and shut out that door, if you will, that dimension, because I was so pissed off at what I was hearing in these other dimensions and how there was layered judgment how there was layered rules how these sins came in so I was already deemed to hell and then I was meant to put this shit onto my kids the heaviness is unbearable no wonder when I had to let that go shut down those all of those kind of avenues and start fresh with a piece of paper that said what do I actually believe and I could not write anything because man had told me everything I had also shut down this door to the soul awareness that I had. I forgot about the Holy Spirit or whatever energy it was touching me on the head and myself going into a state of bliss. Some would say my talking in tongues or light language um, or light language would be talking in tongues in the church. And there's many churches that do it, but some of them you're only allowed to do that if you're a priest. Or if you are one of the people that has gone through the certain, I don't know, like whatever, you know, you've the, the next level, the next level in the church. And I just call BS on that. Like, why is other people more worthy than you or me? They're not. Whether it's religious status, spiritual status, financial status, like society st status, tribal status nobody is more worthy than anybody that is the ultimate if we're going to talk about sin that is a sin to separate yourself from others no matter what it is to separate yourself from your soul you're here to experience it as a human being and the guilt and the shame and the trauma and the heaviness this karma energy that we are adopting into our lives that is, that there is the illusion, that there is the matrix. So I have been calling to follow my soul and my spirit and asking to be more embodied in that, which means a lot of my own ideas and drop-ins, which always comes from spirit and soul, especially when they're in, al when they're in alignment, of course, they are being put to the side. Um, and I'm like, I meant to be doing this. Why am I not doing this? And then my soul is like, go over here and do this. And so I want to share a little bit with you about how to, I want to say identify those differences without making it too solid. Okay. So your human, like I said, is a tool. And if you listen to your human, it will tell you exactly what you need by talking to it. I'm pretty sure there's a modality called body talk, right? You can talk to your human and your human will talk back to you because somewhere you were told that you are human and that is who you be, but it's not. Your human is only one facet of you. We identify ourselves as human. This is how we, this is our face that we wear, how we walk around and a hi, my name is Victoria. I'm 39. I've got two kids. To, that is like one tiny facet of me. And I've always felt like that's a lie. And I've always been so confused at why I feel like I'm a fraud, you know, or why I feel like, but there's so much, I'm not just Victoria who's 39, who's got two children and a husband and, and is a coach, you know, I, God, there's so much more to me and I'm sure you feel the same way. But 
we have identified people by this very, very small limitation. And we seem to do this with ourselves and we seem to do this with our status in the world. And we seem to do this, we put people into boxes. This is a natural thing that humans do. But when we take ourselves out of that status, out of that finite thinking, and we become more infinite, we start playing with, I am a being who has a body. I'm a being, and I see the being as the spirit right? That's how I, I see it. I see your being will always be a being. You will always have a spirit. And then we have a soul. And then we have this over soul, which is, you know, what I've just been touching into with the guides about that. I don't put rules and regulations. I don't go reading intense things of what other spiritual people have said of what has to be, because I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like to be a leader, do I have to sit there and read tons and tons and tons of books? I just simply don't have time. So download me with what you want me to share for my soul's mission, right? So my being, my being is my spirit and my spirit has chosen to be with Luke Bond's spirit, <laughs> the spirit of Luke Bond and my children. Adley and CJ, they are spirit and they've got human bodies and they have a soul. And I've connected very, very deeply with those souls. Those souls have come together and they've decided to be together. So we are humans, we are spirit, we are soul, and we're all communing together in this experience here in the 3D reality on planet Earth. It is the most divine and beautiful experience and I've had many lives with my children and my husband and my friends and possibly you if you're listening to this, if you're still listening right now, we've had many experiences together. We know this when we see somebody and we recognize them straight away. We don't recognize the human, never seen that person in our life. Sometimes we get confused because Facebook, got thousands of friends, who we don't even know who they are, but when you see someone and you recognize them and they recognize you, the chances are very high that your soul knows their soul. You may be from the same collective, you know, meaning um, the same like planet, like another planet. Again, very, very linear when we speak of, I am Palladian, like that's extremely linear. Because our brain can only conceive such a small part of what it means to experience different planets, different timelines, all the different things like that, right? It's just like, what? Where our minds literally blow because we have been shown a very, very linear way to live as a 3D human. And that 3D human requires to live and actually to conceive what it is possible for their brain right so there's no wrongness in having I want to say judgment or limitations and mistaken beliefs there's no wrongness in that it is actually a part of the process so when we're having that 3d 5d pull there's no wrongness for me feeling uncomfortable this morning and feeling the pull like my soul wants to talk to me and then my human was here and I was like oh that's right how do I come together that spirit you know how can I come together with all of these as a part of me and then to, with you as the collective that I'm in excuse me I realized that oh this is what I have to talk about today my soul is calling me to talk about why do we create separation why do we want to go back to those pains that we had when I shut down the doors of the 3D within the church, that seemed to be just made no sense to me. And I also shut down the soul that I felt also with that church. And I, I say, I am not Christian. I am not religion, religious at all, right? I don't even like saying I'm spiritual, to be completely honest, because I feel like there's so many like energies attached to that, right? It's just so, so crazy how we just, when you're coming from a soul level and you see everything is just love, 
And then you see all these conditions and projections and expectations put onto one word. It's because we're human. We're going to do that, but it, it can be quite dense. It's just dense. Like, I'm like, what is the word for that? It's dense. So, yeah, it's it's just fascinating. When you are being led with your soul, everything's love. Do you know when you're like, you're just having a really great day and you're like, I'm just so happy. Nothing could bring me down. Like nothing. And I quite often say in my groups, like your house could burn down, but when you're in alignment and you are coming from your soul, you're coming from the eye of your heart and you know that your faith is unshakable because you know that you're here on purpose. You know that everything's happening for you, for your evolution if, and, and in your favor for the things that you've asked for, for your human, your dreams and your desires, in other words, and you're not cock blocking yourself. You're not, you're just allowing when you're doing that. No one even fucks you off. Nothing. You can watch the news. I mean, I don't watch the news personally, because I feel like that's just diving into a 4D reality and their realities were far too close to home. It's not like watching a program on TV where you can convince your mind it's not real, right? Which we're still creating a collective consciousness by watching that. But the point being, nothing can bring you down. Nothing can make you feel bad or shamed or guilty because you know that you're aligned. You know that if the house burnt down, it must be burning down for a reason. You know, if the shit hits the fan, that it must be happening for a reason because your unshakable faith will move mountains. And this is what we are striving for. Although in the 3 and 4D, it is really hard to stay in that place of unshakable faith. And I think this is where religion and spiritual communities and, you know, different collectives have come together to really unite in the energy of faith. And it's happening in different ways. And there's still these limitations, expectations, projections, hierarchy systems, picking orders to To those practices so we cannot bypass the human stop bypassing the human being and start listening unalignment is just as important as alignment and what if being unaligned wasn't unaligned at all what if it was just signals to listen to what you require to do for your next part and what if ascension wasn't up? What if it was in? What if it was all about your heart? My soul has been telling me something over and over and over again, and it really brings tears to my eyes because I'm not sure how to bring it into the 3D. So the frustration comes in, and then the not self or the unalignment comes in because. I'm like, how am I supposed to do this over here in this when this seems so solid? How am I supposed to speak in my language, which my my beautiful husband tells me when he's doing my punctuation and listening to my stuff that I, I speak backwards. <laughs> I'm like, you know, that's called dyslexia, right? I just love to like put put a solid name out there to give myself some some reprieve, really like, you know, I've got a mission. <clears throat> See, now my throat's going, I've got a mission. And that mission is so grand and glorious. But how am I supposed to bring it out to an intellectual world that has a hierarchy system? Interesting. I can see how a lot of the spiritual guides, the paradigm leaders of the new paradigm, I should say, are coming to me and they're going, I'm creating the oracle cards and I'm doing this and I've created the website and here I am, Victoria, I'm wanting to do the work and they're doing all this back end stuff and they're not actually doing client acquisition. They're not actually reaching the people or making the money and their 3D is still motherfucking broke. 
their five their their body. Sorry, their five. Their, <laughs> they keep wanting me to say the five D. Okay, so the five D is beautiful, but you can't hide in the five D because you're not five D. You're three D, and four D, and five D, all the way up. And this is my mission to bring more ease to the three D, to bring that somatic, to bring in that embodiment to bring in the breath and the people I've been following have all been about being human interesting enough being human and what does it mean the spirit will always be and the amount of dead people I talk to there's a lot of people but ghosts aren't real right there's going to be another podcast ghosts aren't real they are a residue, but spirits are alive and kicking. And we forget that we are spirit now. And we have a legacy that our spirit will carry on. And when people look at our grave sites, they're going to see not actually the human. They're going to see the spirit. They remember the spirit of their human they remember the beautiful things that that spirit did, how that spirit was kind or influenced them or how that spirit held space for them or how that spirit changed their entire lives, which was seemingly good or bad. We feel it in our heart. We feel it in our soul. The human is going to die and go back to the dust go back or turn into dust, go back to the earth. So why are we trying so hard to be spirit and to be soul and not be 3D, not be human? And I say this to you just as much as I say this to me. What brings you to your knees is where your soul is speaking to you. Your soul is always with you and so is your spirit. Your soul is telling you what you require. Your brain is telling you what you should do. And your spirit is experiencing everything in the now. It is so fascinating. We can't get it wrong because ultimately we are living our fate and ultimately we are a soul who has opted to come here to choose those parents to choose those siblings to choose those children or those not children to choose those animals to choose those friends to choose that part on the earth that you live on and everything seems so normal everything seems just as it is and we try to escape the bills, the 3D, the communication issues, uh, the whatever, the, the trauma, the shame, the memories. And what many of us aren't realizing is these things are coming through to give us indicators, like little bells, come over to this door. This timeline therapy, you know, I've been working with my 17-year-old self Ding, 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 ding. Oh, shit. My 17-year-old self is calling the bell. So I go and I speak to her. And sign after sign after sign after sign, my 17-year-old self is around me, the girl who didn't go to the church anymore, who felt the guilt and deep shame, like super deep shame for not going to church, but felt so wrong about going to the church and who prayed for her soul and who got mixed up in alcohol and drugs, trying to forget about the shame and the guilt because she's going to go to hell anyway. That 17-year-old self really requires a lot of love. She felt not rejected just from her God, but she felt rejected from her entire family. Not their fault. They thought she had her shit all together, but what young 17-year-old, what 39-year-old, 
what 59 69 year old what human being can have their shit together we all need support we all need community and the the girl i've been working with is my 17 year old self the one who thought that as long as nobody else is getting hurt it doesn't matter if i hurt so i just wonder where has your human been trying to talk to you and bring you back to different ages and stages for deep healing and really interesting yesterday I went to the city so it's about an hour and a half away from where I live and I took my daughter to do a day of shopping to get prepped for the season ahead summertime let's go to a shop and buy you know all the summer stuff get you ready for school tomorrow da, 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 da. I go to my grandma's so my granddad and spirit you know because I like I say I talk to a lot of spirits and granddad's like you know, you promised me you'd go see your grandma. So I'm like, okay, I'll go see my grandma. So I went and saw my grandma, really enjoy seeing my grandma because I feel like, I feel like I know her soul. And I feel a very deep connection with her soul, actually. It's her soul, not necessarily her human, but her soul. And I, my my daughter runs around the back of the house. We never go around the back. She goes around the back and she comes back with an orange. And I was like, oh, and she was like, there's an orange tree. So I walk all the way around the back place that I haven't been for, uh, like, since I was a kid. And I see these neighbors, like, right there. I'm like, oh, hi, good afternoon, like, right there in their backyard. And they're looking directly at me. And then I turn around and I look back up at them. And I noticed that one of them was my old school teacher. This is in a completely different town from where I live, from where I went to school. And here is a school teacher. She was my art teacher. Art was the only subject I liked at school. The only thing I was decent at, and I still only got like 60%. <laughs> and she goes, Vicky, is that you? And I was like, what? Oh my God, I can't believe you're right there. Where, what? How long have you been here for? And she's like, nine years or six years, seven or nine years. And I was like, okay, how did I not know you were my grandma's neighbor like my grandma had never said anything I thought that was all rather weird and I after I had a chat with her and she was smiling and I knew that her soul knew my soul and whatever I was like that is buzzing me out the last time I saw her I was 17 and then all these other little synchronicities started popping up like things that happened when I was 17 like or the memory of this when I was 17, 17, 17. And my 17-year-old self is like saying, come back to me. Come back to me before you lost this part of me, before you forgot about her, before you bypassed me, before you tried to be an adult and tried to survive. Come back to me. And it was just really fascinating. So then I started listening to Mary Magdalene Revealed. And she, the lady who wrote the book, sorry, her name escapes my mind because I've just started listening to it. She moved back with her seven-year-old son. My son is seven. She moved back to her hometown that she had left, I believe, when she was 17. And here I am here, back when my soul has brought me to the town that I ran away from when I was 17. I did not know I was running, but I've been running ever since. Running from who I really am in case I will be rejected again. Rejected by who? I think it first started with this concept of God, this concept of this male energy deeming me to hell and me being confused as all fuck to how that doesn't make any sense at all, how it seems like one big fat lie. But there's little tiny truths in there. And as I've discovered as Mary Magdalene and Mother Mary and Mary Salome channel through me, I don't feel male or female. I feel both. This word God, I believe, is all within us and has no gender attached to it. And our soul feels all-knowing, wise, beautiful, and extremely 
inviting and there's no separation it's just love so when that house is burning or when the 3d turns to shit if we have got this balance between the 3d and the 5d energy which i believe where the soul resides mostly obviously we're multi-dimensional beings as well what i know to be true is i'm always taken care of but not only that i'm always loved nothing i've done was wrong or evil the only sin that i ever committed was stepping away from myself and believing I was somewhere out there in another town with other people. I was somewhere and I would find that piece of my soul that would make me full. And I know a lot of single people feel this way. I know a lot of church goers feel this way. A lot of spiritual people that are on this path of finding themselves feel this way. But when we come back to the heart and we lead with love, ourselves with love, and we overflow that to the world and we do what our soul is calling us to do, not what our brain is telling us we've got to motherfucking do. And if we are willing to create the books or the oracle cards or do the readings or the energy clearing or or being the school teacher or the nurse or the or doesn't physio whatever you do it doesn't matter what you're doing as long as it feels good and you bring yourself to it your soul's purpose is coming inward and being you as a human because the human is so temporary and another visualization i had the other day was when I'm really, really old, like when I'm as old as my grandma's, I've got one who's 94 and one that's like, I don't know, well into her 80s. I want my grandchildren and my friends to see me as they see me now. Not my blonde hair or my hats, not my awesome eyeliner, <laughs> my lip gloss. Not the conscious parenting or the magnificent mediumship, although I would love magnificent mediumship to be on my tombstone. I want them to see my soul. I don't want them to see my achievements. I want them to see my soul. And I want them to visit me. I want my great-grandchildren to visit me. And I desire to feel content within my heart to know that I have lived my soul's purpose. Even if I don't know what that is. To know that I was truthful and faithful to myself. Not a sinner who has to go and repent. There is nothing to fucking repent for. When I pray, it's not to forgive me for my sins. And if I do say that in the Our Father or the Hail Mary, it's that is more for forgive me for forgetting myself. There is no hierarchy. You essentially are a part of a collective and you are a part of God collective. Your oversoul, I'm going to touch on this real quick as well, because I know a lot of this isn't tangible, so it's very hard to actually grasp on. And many of you, if you're still listening, you may even be asleep now. <laughs> because the codex that comes through in these channels. So the other thing is this oversoul, like we're not just 
here on earth like this is the concept that i'm desiring to bring to you today so you can live your life as a human not just pretending that you are like everywhere and so many people are constantly meditating and trying to time travel and i love it i get it it's beautiful but this is the most important dimension right here because this is the one that we're actually in consciously and like this push pull that I got this morning is the most beautiful thing I could ever get because the purging and the unalignment, not that I would call it unalignment, it's it's a mistaken belief because we can't all be high and happy all the time. <laughs> like that's not what we're here for. We're here for experience, to feel, to to find those clues, right? And um, but there's this element of the oversoul where we are essentially living. Parts of us are living on different planets and different collectives on different councils and we are of light and we are doing much work we notice this in our dreams when we come back and go where was i we recognize the feeling just like we recognize the feeling of the soul the soul does not have a solid energy to notice neither does the spirit our body dies and we have our spirit left and that's who I talk to when I talk to your loved ones I talk to their spirit when you talk to your loved ones I'm not talking to the human I'm talking to their spirit sometimes they show me their body so I can use it as a reference to tell the humans and the brains right but you don't have a brain once you die um so then this the soul will carry on of course but then this over soul is like this overarching overarching sorry energy that always is it's infinite and it is continuously working in different elements there's so many different elements i think elements is maybe the wrong word but there's so many different elements of us right elements seems too dense for this conversation but there's different lights and there's different streams and i was saying to a girl at the retreat the other day you and i because we knew each other we're like we know each other I say this with my soul clients they jump on a call with me and I'm like you know you know me right and they're like yeah I know I know you okay well let's not figure out where that's from because god that could be way too limiting <laughs> so the point being like you are an all-knowing infinite being and right now a part of your consciousness is here in your human body to be human is to look after the human parts, to do the mindset stuff, to do the tapping, to do the next level self stuff, right? Get your body right, listen to yourself, do the healing, go into those little doors when the 17 year old is ringing, you know, come and do the inner child work. That is like all of the, the, the three and the four and the 5D. It's so beautiful. It's a part of the human experience, knowing that your spirit will never die. You can't kill spirit and you can't kill a soul. And this, then, of course, you've got your oversoul, which is also in many different parts, many, many, many different parts um, in many different universes. And it is infinite. And I know that I would go as far as saying every single person that I come into contact with on this planet, whether it's like just anyone that you slightly recognize you are with working in some capacity. It is the most divine experience being a human being. It is the most painful experience. It is the most dense experience. It's the most pleasurable experience. It is so light. It is so bright. And it is so motherfucking scary. How do we look after this human and be of the 5D? This is what we are collectively communicating to each other, through each other, as we let these guides from the galactic support us. Don't ignore the 3D. Don't ignore the human, or you will find yourself a broke healer, a broke psychic. And at the end of the day, when we are having to focus on our problems to look after the 3D, we don't have as much time to spend in an aligned 5D. Okay, so there's a difference. We, If we bypass and ignore the human, 
All right, people are talking about spiritual bypassing. I'm talking about bypassing the human being. This is what needs attention. This is my biggest challenge because I just want to love and have my soul open every day. And if we can do this while we're being 3D, while we're having the unshakable faith in ourselves that everything's working out and that we will get the drop-ins and we will take that aligned action. That's what I talk about all the time. Get the drop-ins in the feminine. Take the aligned action in the masculine. You are female. You are male. Despite what body you are in. Okay. I'm going to leave that there because this is a really big channel. And this is for me just as much as it is for you. Just know that you ascend within there is no hierarchy at all. There's many lies around and agendas, but when you're embodied as a human, you can feel them. And there may be a lie that you perceive from somebody else that they don't perceive that's not a lie for them. So just because you perceive something doesn't mean it's right for somebody else. This is the ultimate mind fuck. <laughs> But at the same time, it's the ultimate awakening to realize that what if there is no wrong or right and the only sin you can have is to forget who you be and then you can redeem that by coming back to self. What if that was your whole entire soul's mission? You will not be punished. I believe you've probably punished yourself already and it was probably unfounded. So come back to you. Know what your energy is. So I'm trying to find the density within the light because there is none. And stop trying to label and identify things or make things wrong by judging them to be wrong. It's not to say we can't stand up for what we believe. Of course, there is things out there that we we require to look at as a collective consciousness to shift, to pivot, to realign, to, to raise a frequency of. Of course, there is definitely things there. But on a self kind of service thing, like have your own pleasure practice as coming back to your soul as a pleasure, pleasure practice, but also don't forget your body. Because too many people are forgetting their bodies and they're finding it too hard to be in the 3D. And it's not because they're more gifted or talented than those who have ease. It just means that they are somewhere bypassing their human and requiring to work with the brain and the tools of, of mindset as well. Have a beautiful day.